Mental health has become kind of a buzzword in the last couple of years, but for our next storyteller, mental health was an important part of her life from the time that she was a child. The daughter of a counselor, she learned from a young age the importance of mental health and the impact of mental illness. Stepping into the family business felt natural and appropriate, but not easy. After 12 years of higher education, Dr. Andrea Weisberger began working in school-based mental health services where for almost a decade, she served school districts across the country. Today, Andrea is the director of early of education and early childhood mental health at the Buckeye Ranch and an adjunct professor at Capital University. Her specialties include mental health counseling with children and adolescents, expressive arts, play therapy, and school-based mental health practices. Andrea's personal and professional experience makes her a powerful advocate for early childhood education. It would be easy to see the early childhood challenges in our state as someone else's problem, but not Andrea. Andrea understands the impact her personal and professional experience can have on the fight for equitable access to early childhood services. So she is here to today to share one of her many stories with all of us. So let's welcome Dr. Andrea Weisberger to the stage. Okay, so I always want a professional storyteller to do my introductions from now on. That was fabulous. Thank you, Bridget. I appreciate that. I gave her just this little bio, and oh my goodness, you took it and ran with it. I appreciate you. Um, so yes, thank you to Bridget and to Troy and everyone at Groundwork. This is amazing. Um, I remember sitting actually in the audience uh, a year ago, almost I guess today, um, starting this journey as being a fellow. So it feels very, um, very good to be here now as, as a graduate. Um, so like Bridget said, I'm Dr. Andrea Weisberger and I'm a licensed counseling supervisor and I'm also the Director of Education and Early Childhood Mental Health at the Buckeye Ranch. As Bridget said, I have known for a very long time that I wanted to be a counselor. In fact, I've known since a very, very young age. My mother was a counselor, so I was surrounded by talks of mental health my entire life. And I knew how important it was. When I was little, my friends would come up to me all the time with their issues, asking for my advice, um, and I would constantly try to solve their problems. Usually my first suggestion would be, well, have you, have you talked to uh, Mrs. Service? She's the school counselor, she's really nice. So I often tried, times tried to make sure I made those connections as well. Um, I was a natural empathizer, and I really did enjoy providing support to others. Uh, eventually, my mother did tell me um, I, was in, I did not have a license in counseling, and it was actually illegal for me to be counseling my friends, and told me I had to stop. <laughs> um, and so, in order to become a counselor, I really did need to have that strong education. Although a PhD was not necessary to become a counselor, I did uh, want to get into that world of teaching and research, and so I decided I did want to get my PhD. I successfully started a PhD program at the University of North Texas in 2012. During my PhD, my husband Jeff and I decided we wanted to start our family. We had more control over my schedule at that time, and also we were just ready to start that next phase of our lives. My son Elliot was born in September at the beginning of my third year. Traditionally, January of your third year in a doctoral program was the time to start that dissertation process. You had more intense hours, more intense classes, and things just kind of, so to speak, got real. After being home with my son for eight weeks, it was time to register for those more intense classes and to start the clock on my dissertation. To say I started panicking was an understatement. It hit me one day as I was rocking him. This tiny human relied on me fully in this world. And to an extent, as a new mom, I felt like I relied on him too. He was my total purpose in the world at that moment. And nothing else mattered but my ability to care for this tiny human. And it was more than I didn't want to leave my baby with anyone else. I truly felt like I could not. 
I had another part of that panic. I had a plan for my education and for my career to become that counselor I always wanted to be. And I wasn't supposed to deviate from that. I spent my life planning on being a working mom with a meaningful counseling career. And now suddenly, I was questioning my entire life plan. As we heard in Bridget's powerful story, I was able to make a choice and stop that clock, postpone my dissertation process for one year. My husband had a good job and we, he was able to support us financially. And I recognized my privilege in my decision-making process. I had a choice. I was able to make that choice. Some women, unfortunately, are not. And it's agonizing to them, having to hand their babies over to other people when they really do want to stay there and be able to witness those things like I was able to witness, those first steps, reading all of the stories, being able to make all of the meals. The majority of families aren't able to make that choice. In 2022, eight European countries, mothers get 100% paid maternity leave for three months minimum. In the United States, employers are only required to provide up to 12 weeks of FMLA unpaid leave to new parents. One in four women return to work within two weeks of having a baby. What a choice to make. Either risk not being able to pay rent or purchase food for your family, or leave your child in the hands of another person two weeks postpartum while you yourself are still recovering physically from giving birth. In the end, I did go back to my PhD program and I did successfully graduate. Because of that education, I am able to serve children and families and our communities to this day. And that choice is not lost on me. That privilege that I had is not lost on me. And I encourage everybody to speak with our lawmakers, our policymakers, to make it so that other women are able to make that choice for themselves. Thank you.